What's going on guys? Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, I want to talk to you about calculating the CDP, otherwise known as the constant descent point. Man, how do you figure out when to go down? This has proved time and time again to be a challenge for bus pilots all over the world. And I want to show you here some tricks that I use not only in training, okay, giving instruction to pilots, but also myself. When I'm out on the line flying, I actually use these very tips. And I'm going to give you now a couple schools of thought that you can actually do here to calculate a CDP. And the method that I'm going to show you right now is my preferred one, which is utilizing the final approach fix. And then later on, I'm also going to show you the other method or the other school of thought, which is utilizing your field elevation and then calculating based off of that. Now, in this example, we've got the ILS or localizer runway 18 right into Dallas. Okay, so we're going to do the localizer 18 right approach into Dallas. And what I'm going to do here is just draw the last two points. We do have uh, Legri. Hopefully, I'm saying this right. Right, and then we've got, uh, let me draw this a little bit closer here. Netty, okay, Netty, at uh, whatever altitude that is. Let me double, double check that over there. Okay, we got Legri at 3,000, Netty at 2,400, so 3,000, 2,400. My recommendation now, when you're trying to figure out how do I calculate my CDP, another very important piece of information, another data point that I'm looking for is what is my uh, glide slope or my path, specifically here on the jet plate so conveniently they put it here for us. It's three degrees, okay? Most are, by the way. Not always, but most are three degrees. Here's the secret. You ready for this? What you want to do in my opinion, okay, this is what I do. Doesn't mean it's right, but I know it certainly works, okay? And this is what I teach and preach and what I love to use out on the line. Take the final approach fix, crossing altitude, and it is 2,400 feet. Now, hopefully the controller brings you in at the previous altitude, and if they do, I'm gonna make all my calculations based off of that for this particular example, but maybe they don't. Maybe they leave you at 4,000 or 5,000. I'll show you how easy it is for you to even calculate it if they don't. But let's say 3,000 to 2,400. What you wanna do is figure out how much altitude do I need to lose to cross my final approach fix at the altitude that is uh, prescribed here. Okay, so 3,000 minus your 2,400 leaves me with 600 feet to lose. In other words, if we were to take that and look at it from a, an altitude calculation standpoint, dividing by 1,000, right, we would get 0.6, right? So now I can do 0.6 times 3, and what do you get? 1.8. You agree? 1.8. And now you add your 0.3, because remember, when you're utilizing uh, vertical speed or FPA, specifically, specifically here's the flight path angle, okay? When you're using this flight path angle on this 320, Selection of minus three degrees down. The airplane doesn't just reach and then go down three degrees. You agree? I and mean, it takes a little bit of time. So we add that 0.3 onto that, and we end up with a value of 2.1. Now, what does that mean, Joe? Well, 2.1 miles from Netty, the final approach fix, okay, we're going to need to initiate our three degree path all the way down. So it would essentially look like Legri, okay, we get over here, distance between the two conveniently happens to be what? 2.1, okay, just notice that. Love it when the plan comes together. 2.1, and we can literally start down right away, and it would actually keep us on a three degree path, uh, basically all the way down to the runway. I always utilize the final approach fix as the altitude where I'm doing all of my calculations off of. Let me now give you an example, and by the way, hang on a minute. If you really want to go up a, another level on this, okay, you can even do this. You can take Netty. This is pure technique now, folks. You don't have to do this. You could do this. Go to your prog page. What do you normally put in your prog page, right? Some of you guys maybe put the runway. KDFW, okay, KDFW, 18 right. Nothing wrong with that. You can do that. Now I'm just getting distance off of the runway. But remember that the distance that we calculated, that 2.1 miles, is not distance from the runway, obviously. It was distance from Netty. And so what I would advise that you can even also try to help you out is in the prog page, put your final approach fix, right? Put Netty over here. Or Needy or 
Nate or whatever, however you pronounce this thing, okay? So I want to put that in the prog page. Now I have that up, and as soon as I see 2.1, I'm on the FCU rolling down my minus three degrees, and I'm smooth sailing. Keep in mind, the yo-yo on the right side of the attitude indicator is only acceptable from the final approach fix inbound. And more specific, it's only accurate. It's accurate from the final approach fix inbound. So if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about with the yo-yo, it's not so much a child's play toy. But what it is, is actually on the side of the attitude indicator, okay, you got this little green ball, if you will, that kind of shows you your vertical path deviation along with the data in the prog page. How convenient. Okay, that yo-yo information, that data only accurate from the final approach fix inbound. Now, let's take a look here at how this actually would play out if they vectored you onto the approach, not at 3,000 feet because, well, sometimes they don't do that, right? Sometimes they leave you a little bit higher. So, okay, no worries. Don't panic. Okay, so let's say they bring you in here at 4,000 feet, same calculation. 4,000 is the altitude. All we got to do is swap out numbers, right? 4,000. Now what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to subtract 2,400 from 4,000. And we end up with 1,600. 1,600 feet needs to be lost. This is how much altitude I need to lose in order. Remember, this is for what? This is in order to cross the final approach fix at the prescribed altitude. 2,400 feet. I need to lose 1,600. Now, 1,600 divided by 1,000. Do the math on that. That's 1.6. You agree? 1.6 times 3. What's that? 4.8. You with me? 4.8. Okay? Now, the next thing we're going to do is add our little 0.3 because remember, we got to put a little sparkle dust on a little 0.3 because the bus doesn't come down just like that. So we got to give it a little bit of time to react. Okay, no worries. 4.8 plus the 0.3 leaves us at 5.1. 5.1 miles from Netty, which conveniently I can put in my prog page, 5.1 miles from Netty. We're going to roll in minus three degrees in the FPA, and now you're just tracking on down. This is the best way to do it. It's the easiest way. It's my preferred way. Doesn't mean it's necessarily the right way, but it's certainly a functional way. Now, let's look at another example where maybe you don't do it like this. You say, you know what? No, I want to calculate it from the airport instead of off of the final approach fix. Okay, good. Yeah, man, let's do that. Let's see how that works out. It'll work. It's just a little bit, well, it can be a little more work intensive. Do you really want to work harder? Okay, come on, man. All right, let's look. Let's see how this plays out. Okay, now again, we're using Dallas. 18 right is the runway. Nothing's changed. Localizer 18 right in the big OKDFW. OK Should have put that up there from the start. Okay, all right, so we've got our points. Legri, Netty, down to the runway. Uh, does that look right? I think so. Good enough. All right, 3,000. Netty over here is at 2,400. And then we go down. Now, airport elevation is 600. So let's see how this math plays out. Is that about right? 600? 607. Okay. All right, so now, how much altitude? This is another way that a lot of pilots and instructors even alike may end up telling you you can use this way. And there's, and there's certainly no... You know, they're not wrong, it's just a different way to do it, right? So 3,000, if I'm at 3,000, I gotta subtract the airport elevation. You agree to see how much altitude I really have to lose, right? So I take off 600 from this, and what I find is I got 2,400 feet to lose. Now, 2,400 feet to lose, divide 2,400 by 1,000, and you end up with 2.4, make some room over here, I got 2.4, times 2.4 by three, and what do we get? 7.2. Okay, 7.2 nautical miles from the runway is when we're going to start down. Now, you still got to add your 0.3 for your Airbus Pixie Dust. Okay, here we go. 0.3 to this, 7.5 now from the runway, but wait, 
Okay, because the loc, the DME is not read off the runway here. It's actually, or excuse me, the receiver rather, the uh, the transmitter that we're receiving. It's it's 2.4 miles, and you can if you have the plate here, we're going to throw it up on the screen. Might as well. So now, really. The point that I'm making is you're not actually going to start down at 7.5 miles because now you have to take into account the 2.4. So it's really 7.5 plus the other 2.4 miles because of uh, the location of the transmitter. So you end up with 9.9 .9 miles. Okay, 9.9 .9 miles. Now, 9.9 .9 miles from the uh, on the loc. Okay, what you, would look, what you would be looking for here is on the bottom left corner of your primary flight display, okay, here's your glide slope and your loc indications, and of course down here you've got your DME with the identifier. So you could just be using DME, and some people prefer this because you're always kind of forward looking, you're always uh, eyes on the PFD and not really scanning with the prog page. Totally understand that, right? That's awesome. The only reason I actually use the other method is because it's less math and less steps, and less steps equals less opportunity to screw the numbers up. And this is what I'm looking to do, minimize risk, man. How do I minimize risk? Take less steps out of it, okay? One step prep, there's only one step, okay? All right, so check it out. So you wanna minimize those steps, and again, you could do it this way. I'm sure some of you, if you disagree or you agree, or maybe you have a different method, please post it in comments. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. But just think about what we did before versus what we're doing here. I mean, prior to this, it was 2,400. We just said, okay, what? I got 600 to lose. That's 0 0.6 times three, right? That's 1.8, okay? And now you add your plus 0.3 and you get 2.1. 2.1 miles from Netty, I'm coming down. I did not have to do this altitude minus the airport elevation. Okay, then the next thing I had to do was do my divided by a thousand times my three, and then if I happen to have a, uh, a transmitter that is not exactly on that runway, uh, on the numbers, right, now you actually have to also account for that much like what we saw right here. So I hope this helps you. Like I said, uh, perhaps you prefer one method over the other. Entirely up to you. This is strictly technique. Whatever works for you, do it, roll with it. But just make sure it's something that you can quickly be nimble with. Because maybe ATC doesn't perfectly bring you in at 3,000. Then now you have to calculate it on a whim quickly at a 4,000 or 5,000. And so what math or what method are you most comfortable utilizing where you can be working math on your toes quite quickly, configuring the aircraft, and staying well ahead of the game at all times? Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. Hope that we get to help you here in person, virtually online, and of course, if I can help you anyway, hit the Contact Us tab and reach out, and we cannot wait to play a role in your training program success.